A very good morning to one and all, particularly Mr. Manar Tairani, Dr. Mohammed Saab, Mr. Um, Akhilesh Khan, dear other uh, gurus, and my dear uh, students. And of course, there are the participants also, my dear viewers. Pressure in an addressing a, a community, which includes uh, my son also and my daughter also. Two of them are your wards. They are also in the final year now. So it is a wonderful opportunity for me to address on this. Um, and particularly, I am thrilled to speak on this uh, subject, constitutional value. Sir Rupesh uh, has been saying, no, we have uh, in so many words, in so many places uh, set constitutional value. But what exactly is the constitutional value? And where does it, uh, you know, what is the Lakshman Draga or what, where exactly is limit or limitation? Nobody has uh, ever defined. And there are some things, so, so Rupesh, I believe, you know, which you can't define. Because it is beyond definition. But we know it is so fundamental. So how fundamental are those fundamental values is the issue when we think about those issues. So I used to speak. When you speak about the fundamental rights or fundamental duties, how fundamental are they in our life is the most important uh, thing. So if you ask me a single definition uh, as to what is the constitutional value, I would say that it's, it's, uh, uh, it's actually the, 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 the fundamental values and the philosophy running through the constitution of India. It's the basis of our uh, uh, um, uh, particular polity, basis of our nation, without which it will not be India, at least without which it will not be the, we, the people of India. And uh, again, I would say the most important constitutional value I perceive in the constitution is we, we the people of India. This country belongs to us. We have constituted this uh, great nation, Bharat. So we means, you know, it does not belong to uh, uh, literate. It does not uh, exclude illiterate. It does not include a particular religion. It does not exclude a particular religion. It, is, uh, uh, it does not uh, exclude a particular class. It, it's, a, it's an all-inclusive definition that whoever is uh, part of this country, this country belongs to them. So we the people of India, according to me, is the greatest uh, uh, and the most important constitutional value, I perceive it. In it, we can see equality. In it, we can see dignity. In it, we can see fraternity. In, in, which, uh, in, in that, we can see the, the, all the values, you know, yeah, all uh, comprehensively uh, included into it. We can just read into all those things, you know. Probably our sister, the largest written constitution where we have started with this expression, be the people of India. So, it's my country, and this country belongs to me. So from my very childhood, I used to say, India is my country. And that's why, you know, in the schools also, when we start, you know, our, our morning assembly, is said, India is my country, all Indians are my brothers and sisters. It actually starts from this constitutional value of we the people of India. India is my country. This country is mine. And I'm proud of this country. Bharat Mera hai and Mera Bharat Mahan hai. This is my Hindi. But I, I used to be very proudly uh, saying always to all people, you know, this is uh, the greatest value I perceive in, the, in this uh, constitution. And as you all know, but for this constitution of India, India would not have been India as we see now or as we have seen so far. This is the only text. I always say this is the only holy book which webs to the whole country. It is such a diverse country. It is the greatest miracle of the, of, uh, the God on earth is India, according to me. We have um, 
134 odd people here. We have uh, 20, now it's 28, no, one is gone. 28 states, seven union territories, um, which has 3.3 uh, um, square kilometer, million square kilometer, uh, it, uh, it's, it extends to. Um, it has uh, a life expectancy of 70 years. It has 22 scheduled languages. 844 dialects, 71.2 uh, 70% uh, plus is literate, but uh, around 22% are uh, the, the below poverty line, and uh, 120 crores uh, in this country use mobile. And India has uh, given birth to world uh, uh, famous religions. <clears throat> and in this country, all religions uh, have taken the roots also. So we have uh, classes of people. We have different castes of people, different, different sets of people. We have people uh, with different lifestyle, different languages. With all these, India is India because of this constitution of India and because this constitutional values which we can see the fundamental values in the constitution have always been upheld so far thankfully um, generally by the judiciary though occasionally uh, I say I must confess occasionally this institution has failed the constitution also you know what has happened in the history past and present where um, this institution could not uphold, rather did not uphold some of the constitutional values. We did not go into those aspects, but I'm saying that, but for this judiciary, this, uh, this India would not have been the India as we see, because it has been trying its level best to uphold the, its, uh, uh, the fundamental value, the, what you call the, the, the philosophy or the brooding spirit, as uh, Professor Rupert said, brooding spirit in the constitution, on this uh, basic values. So basic feature, basic value, basic structure, whatever name we call it also. You know, according to me, I see it in a different uh, uh, perspective altogether. We have seen several type of uh, buildings uh, constructed. All of us uh, by this time, particularly the students of Lloyd would have traveled the far and wide. You have seen many types of constructions. So think of a building which, is, which has five foundations. Five foundations. It's not one foundation stone, then five foundations. Likewise, like in a, in a meeting, when we start the meeting, you light so many, so many lamps. So there, there are not there are five foundation stones have been laid. That India is a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic. These are the five, five uh, foundation stones on which uh, this country is built. So from those uh, five foundations, the country is built into the, the, the other, other the, the, now comes the superstructure. The superstructure is uh, very much uh, part of this foundation also because from the foundation, those uh, superstructure also stands. So in that way, we see we have uh, the particular, now comes the pillars. From the foundation comes the pillars. First pillar is uh, justice. And that, yeah, that, that pillar has uh, three sub pillars. Socio economic political. Then comes liberty. It has five sub pillars thought, expression, belief, faith, worship. Now comes the third pillar of equality, of status and opportunity. And these three with the sub pillars promote fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and the integrity of the country. So we have, uh, if, if you can just conceive of a building, which have five foundation stones on which, you know, we have this uh, four pillars coming with the sub pillars also, and this country is such a, such a structure. Well, I set up on this uh, particular, uh, particular ocular uh, concept, only to see that you know, if you just remove one, uh, foundation stone, building force, 
if you just uh, tinker with the one pillar building falls if you tinker with the one sub pillar again the structure is affected so all these together you know uh, we, we have a very very beautiful structure you can't touch it that is precisely the reason under article 368 we said you know the, the, the judiciary protected the structure saying that you, know, you can have your repair or maintenance work here and there chipping you can uh, you can replace one tile here and there you can do any sort of repair and uh, cleaning work etc you can add to anything but don't touch this uh, main foundation uh, foundational principles or the cardinal pillars you use the word and the professor used uh, two words use the word pillar found the, the 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 cardinal cardinal you said cardinal yes cardinal pillars don't touch those pillars and uh, so therefore the the amendment is the chipping process amendment is the maintenance and repair process amendment is you know you can amend it to remold etc but don't touch the basics don't remove the basics we have seen many buildings you know where we have seen the 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 uh, the, the main structure as such is maintained but uh, as something else is coming around as something else is coming around is actually that's why one of the judgments uh, is actually a constitutional judgment uh, this humble self had a one expression to use what the constitution is is for the judiciary to say and what the constitution should be or constitutional aspiration should be yes it is for the people uh, the law makers and the executive to say before they can do any sort of a chipping or a, a, a beautification work or add on to it also but don't touch the basis so if you are the, the constitutional values according to me are these five cornerstones in india is of the people and that people without any discrimination as to caste color creed sex language place of birth possession or position whatever it is no discrimination at all that is the beauty of india so it starts from the ground or ground we go again as a ground norms that's the that's the most important constitutional value now the five corner i sold you know, the foundation stones i said you know, sovereign socialist secular democratic republic from there comes the three four pillars justice equality liberty fraternity and all these uh, pillars have um, uh, sub pillars also the first pillar uh, of justice uh, as a socio economic political when it comes to equality it comes to status and opportunity when it comes to liberty it has five liberty of thought expression faith belief and worship why it said so i just uh, narrated little later and then comes and that's promoting fraternity fraternity is a very core value in india particularly we want to understand in today's principle also one of the very core constitutional value is fraternity fraternity what fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual so the dignity of the individual is actually preconceived by his right to justice his right to equality his right to liberty <laughs> all sorts of liberties one aspect is affected his dignity is affected if his liberty of thought is affected his dignity is affected if his uh, liberty of worship is affected his dignity is affected if his uh, uh, liberty of expression is affected his dignity is affected if his uh, equality concept of equality equality of status is affected his uh, dignity is affected so we always say what is this let me take to another concept of constitutional morality we always speak about constitutional morality what is this constitutional morality constitutional morality all of us moral moral means in a sense of good and bad and constitutional what is the indian constitutional morality that simply consists of four principles according to it is justice uh, and no, we don't say it is that is equality liberty dignity and fraternity justice is an over uh, what do you call all pervasive concept altogether but constitutional morality uh, comprises of these uh, four principles of equality liberty uh, dignity and fraternity of which the most important uh, is dignity so the, the that is why you know see in all the judgments of the supreme court in the criminal uh, uh, side also in the matter of arrest also in the matter of trial also in the matter of uh, his uh, keeping in the jail also 
we always, you know, we have to say garden and, you know, uh, uh, like a people on five words, like that, you know, uh, the, the dignity of that individual. Nobody shall touch uh, this dignity of individual. And this dignity shall not depend upon his status because everyone is entitled to the same status, uh, same treatment and uh, same, uh, what you call, access and same rights also. That is the most important uh, constitutional um, concept of um, these foundational values or fundamental values also. So we, sometimes we are call it uh, basic uh, features, sometimes we have said it basic structures, one has said it uh, uh, core values, etc. Now let me touch on, uh, uh, though I didn't want to since uh, Professor Rubesh has said it, whether well, well, the independence of judiciary is a constitutional value. Yes, 100% it's a constitutional value. It comes under the democracy. In that foundation stone, India is a democratic country. It is uh, governed by rule of law. If it is governed by rule of law and it's a democratic country, not an autocratic, not a monarchy, it's, it's a democracy. It's of the people, by the people, and for the people. If that is so, it should be, uh, it, 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 it should have independent judiciary. Why? This concept of independent judiciary can be understood uh, vis a vis a committed judiciary. Yeah, I, had a, I attended once uh, an international conference um, uh, of which uh, one of the countries was represented by a chief justice of uh, that state. And he was the general secretary of the party. I was uh, shocked. He was saying, no, so he, he was, uh, that chief justice was uh, rather more shocked than any one of us by listening to us that, you know, we have nothing to do with the state. And, you know, uh, we can even strike down the, we means the judiciary. The superior judiciary in the country can even strike down the act. He was shocked. He literally jumped up from the seat. What? An act of the constitutional amendment has been struck down by this country, by the judiciary of this country. So that see, this independence can be understood like that. This is this is not a judiciary where you have to endorse or you have to uh, advise or you have to you know uh, uh, support uh, what the what, what the executive says. You have to, as a judiciary. Your duty is always to see what does the constitution say in this? What is the constitutional value in this? What is whether this amendment conforms to the constitution, whether this uh, violates the constitutional guarantees, whether it is antithetic the constitutional values? If so, yes. So for which you need an independent judiciary. This is what is called independent judiciary. This can be understood only vis a vis. The, the committed judiciary. If you have a committed judiciary, we want people to say, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Don't worry. We have a Supreme Court. Uh, uh, a friend of mine said, you know, yes, we have a Supreme Court of government of India. Why do you worry? India cannot conceive of a Supreme Court of government of India. India is in there only because, as I told you, you know, we have seen the onslaughts on the constitution because the political parties are their own. You can't blame them. All the political parties have their own ideas, their own philosophies, their own policies, their own approaches. But they are entitled to also. But whether those policies, philosophies, ideas, approaches, etc., are constitutional, is not to be seen in the debate in the parliament, but it will be tested in the court. In the Supreme Court of India or in the Superior Court, the High Courts also have that power also. In the 42nd Amendment, when the um, there was an attempt to reserve wholly to uh, take away that power also, but uh, it was the, against the account, so it was withdrawn. So therefore, the superior courts have the power to test the constitutionality of a legislation, constitutionality of a constitutional amendment as well. That's the most beautiful part. And uh, Professor Rubesh referred to the, the um, NJAC judgment also, whether the constitutional amendment has been stuck down, the, the act has been stuck down, and it has declared that the independence uh, of judiciary is again, it has reiterated that it, it forms part of the basic structure of the constitution of India. You will not see this basic structure of the constitution uh, anywhere in the constitution, this concept of basic structure. It evolved as, uh, uh, you know, from 73, uh, from Keswaranda Bharati, where there was, of course, there was some other references earlier also, but as a concept it evolved, uh, in case of Ananda Bhadri, that's the basic structure. You can't touch the basic structure. As I told you, the moment you uh, touch or tinker with any basic structure, the, 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 it affects the, 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 the whole building as such. So I was always telling my students also, 
you just conceive of a building where you can't tinker with one pillar also. So, so therefore, independence of judiciary because, uh, and also, the people should have, where does this independence of judiciary rest on? It rests on the confidence of the people. Now, else, the people say, you know, well, 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 the judiciary. If it goes to this court, this will be the, if it goes to that court, if it comes up before this many judges, yes. If it goes to that place, no. Yes. So if, if this sort of uh, public opinion is formed, that according to me is the is the depth, the bell of uh, the constitution. It is actually um, the 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 the. It's actually going to going to destabilize the country. That's why the 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 the, 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 the constitutional courts always conceived to be because you, nobody can say he was appointed by me. So no obligation. So therefore he is obliged to me. So therefore nobody should have any obligation. You may ask a counter question to me. What are the other countries where uh, the people also participate in the selection and appointment? I can only say we have not reached that stage. I will stop with that. Our country has not reached or grown to that stage where we can have full faith. Whether that independence of judiciary, even with this present system of uh, the colonial system continuing after once, the first, second, third, and fourth. Uh, first, of course, it was given up. Second and third, it was reserved back. Fourth, uh, it was reiterated. But whether the primacy of chief justice is there or not is a big question now. Even with the, the constitutional safeguards, yet the public faith has been shaken in the independence of the judiciary in the matter of appointment itself is an indication that uh, independence of the judiciary in India as of now should be treated uh, as a basic structure and the primary of the primacy of the chief justice. Should be written. If you remember, mine was the shortest judgment in the NJAC. Uh, in fact, in the latter part of my judgment, always uh, uh, dealt with the, the function of the college, where I used to do two recent expressions uh, of uh, uh, what is that? Glasnost um, and Perestroika. We need to look into and uh, we need to actually, you know restructure the whole thing, where we need to have a secretariat, we need to follow certain guidelines, principles. We should not uh, look as if the judiciary is uh, arbitrarily appointing, as has always been, uh, sometimes, not always, sometimes been alleged to be, and sometimes proved uh, correct also, because you know, if, the, if you don't follow some sort of a principle in the matter of appointment, in the matter of uh, um, what you call elevation as chief justice, in the matter of timing of appointment, etc., 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 they're all very important issues. So therefore, this can be eschewed only if you have a, a regular uh, systematic approach. So let me, since uh, Professor Rubesh touched on this independence of this, which is a hot topic, I just dealt with uh, <laughs> this uh, this much analysis. So let me come back to the other um, five. Of the five sovereign, don't worry, everybody knows India is a sovereign country. Nobody has, uh, no foreign country, we are not uh, uh, you know, under anybody. And nobody can claim anything or else. So in socialist also, I don't have to explain now. Uh, uh, democracy, uh, Republic also, I don't have to explain. The, the president of India, anybody, any one of us, I'm sure many of the listeners are about 35. Anyone who is uh, 35 years of age can become the president of India. If he is otherwise qualified to be elected as a member of um, the, the parliament, that's only qualification required. No other qualification. So that is the beauty of Indian Republic. Anybody can become the president of India. They, the Supreme Executive. That is the beauty of Republic. Let me just touch on two uh, values. So I'm so just leaving apart uh, for the time being sovereign, uh, socialist, republic. Those three things are pure academic, I'm sure. Though, though I know other things are also academic. Uh, and uh, democratic, uh, also I have touched since um, to the extent it is important for us because democracy, the whole spirit of democracy is, you know, the voice of the people and not noise of the people. You can, you can suppress the noise, not voice. This is actually the basis of democracy. We, you can only suppress noise, not voice. That is why dissent is part of it. So I have seen a very beautiful definition of democracy. Sometimes oaths are also to be weighed, not always counted. That's also part of democracy because it denotes uh, and connotes 
what dissent is because only if you know the other side you'll be in a position to travel beyond otherwise we won't be able to travel beyond so the dissent gives you an opportunity to see what is beyond what is on the other side so it is not noise it is voice only so suppression of voice is antithetic to democracy and the permission of dissent is part of our democracy let me stop uh, and tolerance these are two things i just want to touch when we speak about uh, the democracy i also said independence is part of the independence uh, the democracy also well uh, 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 the dissent and tolerance these are the two things so you will be in a position to listen to this only if you are this virtue of tolerance if you are not able to tolerate uh, a, a, a different view or a dissent or a, a different aspect then you are finished you are not democratic so it's a it, it's a it, it's it's an inbuilt uh, or what you call inborn uh, quality of every indian that i am a democratic citizen which means i should listen to others and i should show tolerance in entertaining other views also this is actually a democratic value as uh, as i see in the constitution i think for the time being that will be sufficient for democracy let me just touch on secularism and just mean just tell you this uh, socialism and the secularism these two things were not there when the constitution was made in 1949 they were actually introduced uh, by the 42nd amendment but uh, when it was asked why they were not there see you don't have to say that they are to be there that was the answer a beautiful answer i i went through uh, one of the answers why they were not actually uh, projected as such uh, in the preamble so they said you know it was not necessary but uh, by that 1975 the, the the in the indian civil society felt in the political society felt or the polity felt that uh, for the time said it is better to restate what is not actually stated what is deemed not stated is actually restated that is why the socialist and uh, secularist uh, concepts were introduced uh, uh, the post the 90s and in the 75 42nd amendments also the, it was actually necessary to state in the time had come by the time that it is uh, required to say what it is rather than uh, say that it is already there this was the only answer so let me come to the secularism the most uh, uh, significant unique and beautiful aspect of indian secularism is that you know it is uh, uh, they, they they want to call india does not belong to any religion india is not against any religion and india welcomes all religions these are the three things it is not of any religion not against any religion it is it welcomes all religions because religion ultimately india has seen or india recognizes that india religion also plays a role in molding the character and conscience of a, we call it the character and conduct now let me take out this word conscience it has a different significance character and conduct because all of us have seen character and conduct certificate i have wondered sometimes why we require character and conduct you need only character certificate no we require character and conduct so in determining the character and conduct of a person religions always played a very positive role that has been recognized by india so sarva mad sat bhavana that has been the approach of this country so india gave birth to you know world famous religions in you know, buddhism jainism sikhism they were given uh, birth in this country only india welcomed the christianity india welcomed islam india welcomed the parsis no any non religion and india where you know say you don't read this article 25 as freedom to religion is actually freedom to conscience you are free to believe or not to believe you can your indian citizens are free to not to believe in any religion and in case you believe here comes your uh, constitutional guarantee or constitutional freedom or constitutional value of your belief that constitutional value of your belief as uh, actually you know, is faith belief and worship these three things are protected in article 25 subject only to public order health and morality and the party of the constitution you have a right to uh, profess practice and propagate nowhere in the world you will see uh, such a guarantee uh, such a constitutional value being given as a guarantee to the citizen of this country um, uh, in, in the constitution as a fundamental right so 
if you have a, because the, the preamble says it's you know, and all of you, you know, as students, some, uh, because some of you are students, whenever you have a doubt in understanding the constitutional provisions, you always refer to the, the preamble. What is the preamble? So that is actually, it's a reservoir. We go to the reservoir of uh, the whole values and we try to develop into that. Also. That has been the approach the judiciary always made and also the, uh, the, the legislative also. Whenever they made laws also, they always saw uh, and respected the, this uh, preamble of principles also. So faith, belief, and mercy. And it is actually enshrined in Article 25 whether you have a liberty to believe or not to believe. And if you believe, subject to public order, health, and morality, and part three, you can profess in religion. You can practice in religion and you can propagate in religion also. That means freedom is given to this country. So this secularism um, is, is treated as a basic structure and one of the most important constitutional value of this country because India is a highly, Indian polity is a highly religious civil society. The, the Indian citizens, the, the, the majority, 99% of the people believe in one religion or other. India welcomes that faith also. That's why, you know, uh, the, all, all this uh, belief, faith, and worship are protected. It's because uh, irrespective of the religion that you believe in, all religions uh, teach you one thing, that be a good man. Be loyal to your country as you are loyal to your God. This is the approach. That is how we developed that concept of Mano Seva is Mother Seva. Uh, this, uh, I'm going the Dharma principle also, but I just want you, all of you, to understand. But with all this, I'm saying our country should be proud, and you should also be proud in seeing a person, not because he belongs to a religion, not because he belongs to a class, not because he speaks a language, not because he belongs to a particular re uh, region, not because he's of a sex, not because of uh, he's of a tribe. My dear, my dear, my dear friends, all those who are listening to me, only purpose that you learn law is to see man as man, Indian as an Indian. Above all these, you know, differences of uh, caste, color, creed, religion, sex, language, region, caste, tribe, authorities. Beyond all this is I am an Indian. That is the dignity of uh, being an Indian. Makes no difference that I belong to A religion, B religion, or C religion. It makes no difference as I belong to A caste, B caste, or C caste. It makes no difference I have this much wealth or that much wealth. It makes no difference I hold this position or that position. It makes no difference whether I'm male or female or a transgender. It makes no difference whether I speak this language or that language. It makes no difference as I belong to south, to east, to west, to north, east, southeast, northeast, whatever it is, you know, because India is one India. So my dear uh, uh, listeners, uh, my only humble request is only to keep this constitution, greatest constitutional value in our mind. We may have political ideologies, political differences, different religions, different languages, etc. But let's all treat Indians as Indian. India is my country and all Indians are my brothers and sisters, irrespective of their language, irrespective of their religion, irrespective of their caste, irrespective of the region, irrespective of their language, irrespective of their, um, what they call them, tribe, irrespective of their sex. Thank you. I'll stop here. And uh, probably we, we need little time for the students to interact with us. I, I want uh, the, the people to interact with us. They only know what they want to know. I only know what I wanted to tell you. But I now I want to know what you want to know from me. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, yeah. Uh, sir, so there are so many questions by the students. Uh, one question is that, uh, so it has been asked by Ms. Priyanka Dev, uh, that there have been a tendency to make the state stronger and people weaker. The present uh, infestation is no exception. Isn't it this a hindrance on the existing constitutional values and ethos? Priyanka, no, there's no doubt about it, you know. Say, you cannot think of a country becoming stronger when your people become weak. Only by becoming the people stronger, the country, became, uh, country can become uh, strong. There's no, you cannot even conceive of a state becoming strong with the weak people. That is not democracy. 
So we should all stand up, raising our voice, not noise. When you know, when there is a tendency on the part of the state to 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 make you weak and make the state a levier than a stronger one. No, that is not democracy. We the people will be affected. Uh, the next question is uh, from Ms. Purbir Singh. She is asking uh, why there are attempts to, why cases are raised to remove secularism from preamble. Why cases? I don't think there's any case which has come so far. Let Let me rephrase her question, sir. I think uh, she has not phrased the question well. Uh, uh, is there any attempt to remove the secularism part from the preamble? Is there any attempt from the side of any political party or from the side of uh, parliament where this uh, the term secularism it was inserted after the amendment in our constitution? Was there any attempt to remove it? No, there has... If so, if in future any attempt yeah. is made, yeah, what yeah. should be the... Yeah. Fortunately, fortunately, not so far. But uh, as you all know, there are murmurings here and there that this uh, secularism is a hindrance uh, for this uh, country, so it should be removed. There have been uh, vague murmurings here and there. So the moment, you know, it started murmuring, at that step, we call it, you know, it should be nipped in the butt. That's why I'm saying, you know, le 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 let's be very vigilant. The constitutional democracy asks you to be vigilant. Unless the people are vigilant, you, are, you will become weak. You become weak only because you are, you are, you are strong to be vigilant. So let's be vigilant in safeguarding on these uh, cornerstones, what called foundation stones, and the what they call cardinal pillars and sub pillars. Uh, so there is one more question from uh, Shuhede Ranjan. Uh, he's asking uh, secularism being basic part of the constitution, how far it was helpful in providing growth to the value of constitution and India as a state. Well, it has, uh, in the, the secularism has played a great role in molding the citizenry of this country, according to me. Uh, the, 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 the values of human values have been uh, inculcated in the minds of uh, the civic society by the, by the religions. So all the religions have been playing their great role in molding the citizens to good human beings. This is the value they have given. So that has played a great role in building up this country. So, because no, uh, no religion to be teaches to be a bad man, no, every religion teaches and requires to be a good man. First of all, be a good human being. That is actually the fundamental uh, and the most important part of uh, any religion, making the people better citizens and better human beings. Only if you are a, a good human being, you can be a good citizen. That is why India accepts secularism. If you are not a good human being, you cannot be a good citizen. So the, the, the most important requirement of a good citizen is to be a good human being. That is why India welcomes all religions and permits all religions to make people good human beings. Because all good, good human beings will be good citizens and it will be a good country. A country of good citizens, yes. Uh, there is one question from Mr. Vimal. Uh, he is asking, uh, sir, is basic structure and constitutional value are same thing? No, Vimal, uh, these are two different things. It all depends on how much value you read into a basic structure. So far, uh, uh, the basic structures uh, which have been laid down uh, by the constitution, you know, we can you can read constitutional values in all the basic, in all the basic structures which have been set so by the judiciary so far. But uh, nobody has ever said that constitutional value is a basic structure because, because constitutional value is already there in all the uh, concepts of basic structures like independent judiciary, secularism, sovereignty, integrity of India, democracy, all these, you know, uh, constitutional values are already there. So next question is uh, from Mr. Aryaman. So he's asking, uh, are the words secular and socialist important to our constitution and to our basic structure? 
even though our constitution gives us the right to profess and practice any religion we want before the word was added yeah see this word the profess and practice it doesn't stop there there's a third element yes uh, aware of that also profess practice and propagate also the, the word propagates is there in the constitution article 25 so these things were there that with all that why did uh, uh, the 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 country thought of uh, as i as I, if you had listened to me i said you know they, this country thought of uh, actually restating what is already stated but not reflected that was the 42nd amendment concept so prior to that you know the article 25 was there profess practice and propagate religion was there freedom of conscience was there three with the three uh, particular main liberties of faith belief worship which includes uh, profess practice and propagation also you can't uh, prevent anybody from propagating his religion that uh, prevention can only be subject to that uh, four safeguards of uh, public order health morality and patri subject to that you cannot prevent anybody from propagating anybody's religion or non religion also that is says freedom of conscience that's it so uh, don't get confused with regard to this conversion etc conversion uh, is a different thing from propagation the whole purpose of propagation is not conversion let's not confuse with regard to that so this freedom was there but with all that the country thought you know let let us restate what is already there let this let it be reflected in the preamble itself that this is also a, a founded uh, this these two are also because socialism uh, versus capitalism you must understand that also when i said uh, about uh, uh, particular independence uh, committed and non committed like was socialism you will have understood as opposed to capitalism so india the whole approach of uh, at uh, egalitarian society is a socialistic socialistic pattern it need to be reflected as also the socialism because it was time the country thought after the after 25 26 years of its existence it was felt necessary better to state it than to say that is already there So there is a question from Mr. Uh, N. M. Uh, he is asking that, uh, so do you think that the judiciary without social and gender diversity can be trusted by the people of India as an independent organ of justice dispensation or justice delivery system? Yeah, justice should not only be done, but should also appear to have been done. like i agree with in principle that you no know, if you want uh, uh, that you know a reflection of the country but at the same it cannot be treated as a reservation also if you see that you know it, it's a reservation then things are gone but at the same time is important that you know in the thinking process of that uh, higher judiciary the the, uh, uh, the 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 whole country as such uh, Uh, is in a position to participate in the deliberation so participating in the deliberation in the matter of constitutional interpretation or deciding what a constitutional value is i agree with you uh, it is better to have a good reflection provided your merit is not compromised so there is a question from the side of mr gora mittal he is asking that uh, after judicial review and activism Where is India heading in terms of law making? What stops India from making the laws? How many laws? Are, how many laws are made? How many amendments the Constitution has undergone so far? Amen. And of the how many of, of the uh, Constitution amendments, how many have been struck down? You can you can you can you can just count on your hands the count the Constitution amendments which have been struck down. We have crossed a century, but the which have been struck down, you can you can count on your hands. Number one. Number two, uh, have you got any idea as to the number of legislations which have made in the past uh, how many years now? Twenty years now. How many legislations? How many have been struck down? Again, take your hands. You can number in there. So nothing prevents the constitutional aspirations being taken forward as per the requirement of the time, not according to the philosophy of the party who rules it, but according to the need of the hour. Because uh, what is the law? the most beautiful definition of law as in is is actually mirror of life so the the civic society may require at a particular point of time a particular type of governance 
a particular type of uh, guidance. So guidance and governance come from making the law. But that governance and guidance should not be in violation of the constitutional guarantees of the people. Therefore, nothing stops the, 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 the polity or the, what the people of India from making laws. Sir, one question is from, his, uh, from Mr. Vimal. Uh, he is asking the motto of Supreme Court of India is Yato Dharma Tato Jaya. Means there is, uh, where there is Dharma, there will be victory. Then how can secularism uh, be the basic structure of constitution? What is Dharma? Dharma is uh, we the people of India having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic and to secure to all its, secure to all its citizens justice, social, political, economic, equality of, of um, status and opportunity, liberty of um, thought, expression, faith, belief and worship and to promote fraternity, assuring the dignity of individual and the unity and integrity of this country. This is Dharma. Don't get confused with the Dharma which we read in uh, Mahabharat or uh, Raman or uh, in any other religious text of uh, Bible or Quran or uh, this, uh, what you call our um, Sikh uh, uh, holy book. All these religions have uh, different concepts of uh, Dharma. Basically, uh, a common thread uh, runs into everything, but there are different approaches or different dimensions of this dharma. That is not the dharma that is actually stated in that motto. This dharma that is said is a constitutional dharma. If you uphold the constitution, there is victory. If you fail to uphold the constitution, there is failure. Uh, sir, there is a question from Mr. Aditya Mishra. Uh, he is asking the question on appointment uh, and selection in uh, higher judiciary. His question is, uh, is judiciary itself uh, giving the equal opportunity? Majorly, this question arise in the issue of select, uh, selection of judges in the high courts and supreme courts. Uh, can't there be exam uh, like PCSJ for the selection of higher courts? I think <laughs> the process of IJS is there. But uh, sir, uh, would you like to say something on this if you wish to? Yeah, I can only comment on it. Uh, it's not an honor that they pronounce on the exactly. uh, see, uh, see can, can you just think of uh, uh, appointment of a judge uh, like uh, in the matter of uh, somebody selecting a person interviewing uh, on the matter of uh, what they call basic knowledge uh, and then you know interviewing and then etc 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 you know the qualification required somebody to become a judge 10 years of uh, uh, as a lawyer, no? If you are 10 years as a lawyer, so there is a constitutional safeguard that uh, you are a qualified person in having been in the field of law for 10 years. But um, I don't think, except Justice Krishnayar, nobody has uh, gone into the bench by merely by be completing 10 years. He did not even have 10 years uh, together, if you take it. There is <laughs> there's something uh, different all to that. But uh, he is a different uh, person. He was a lawmaker. He was in the executive. He was uh, in the judiciary everywhere. That's a different thing. So the 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 uh, uh, though the idea is good, but it may not work always in the sense you know because you always assess the merit of a person from the the time from the performance you make in the in the court because the collegium of that high court consists of uh, the, the chief justice and the two. And it comes to the Supreme Court, you know, where the Collegium of One Plus Two. Uh, so the the inputs they have uh, uh, they have seen in the performance of a lawyer in the court, and you know his integrity more than performance, his integrity is more important. So you cannot test uh, uh, what you, uh, what they call test the integrity of a person by in a, in a written examination or in an interview. You are, you have to you have to see through and through a person having been. Uh, in the court itself, how he has been, how his conduct has been in uh, uh, court, in conducting cases, in his personal life, in his public life. Um, uh, I know the cases of many people, you know, who have been excellent lawyers, but they have a little 
they, they had a, what they call a degree, uh, don't take it in a cubling way, but they had a, a moral side problem. So we, we used to say in that part of the country, MSW, moral side weak. If your moral side is weak, then it might affect your, uh, your, 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 your uh, uh, interpretational uh, skills or approaches in core values under the constitution. This is the only reason. That is where it comes in the dharma. That dharma is the constitutional dharma because we are having a constitution where the cardinal, one of the cardinal pillars is of uh, uh, foundation is of secularism, it's democracy, and cardinal pillar is also of uh, liberty and equality of um, where the liberty says it's of uh, faith, worship, um, thought, expression, uh, faith also, the uh, five aspects. You know? That's the only reason. It may not be always desirable to have, but uh, uh, nobody shall compromise merit. I agree with uh, 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 my friend uh, who has asked this question that, you know, in your, in your passion to get appointed somebody, you shall not compromise the merit. That is something which is to be, uh, I, I tell you, the independence of judiciary is to be protected by the judiciary only. Whether the judiciary has protected it always, I must also say, yes, the, this institution has failed sometimes. And if it has failed, it has, uh, uh, yes, it has eaten its fruits also. So there is one more question from uh, Sidra Khalid Khan. Uh, the question is, does uniform civil code hinder the secularism? Are we in a position to implement a uniform civil code in India right now? It's a political question um, in the sense, you know, though, you know, the directive principles of um, our governance, it's under the policy of the state. The, the, um, that part for uh, A starts with that only, no, part for starts with that only. Uh, where it shall be the duty of the state while making legislations. The idea is good. But again, I tell you whether it is time for this country to think of a uniform single code, where we have all recognized, we spoke about triple talak a little earlier by, by Professor uh, Rubesh while introducing me. Well, see, what, what because this country has its roots uh, uh, in, the, in the legislations which the people have been practicing the horse, the laws made by the country. So they had a good system of governance within themselves in the community. And those laws which are not otherwise against the core constitutional values and the uh, particular constitution, which we are recognized also. So whether um, all those can be you know, one day taken away and made, you know, um, well, I don't know, uh, it, it um, but it is time for this country to think in those times, I have my own reservations. But being a political question, I don't want to comment beyond that. But these are the stark realities. But idea is good. I, I endorse. But idea is good. So, uh, I told you know, as I told you, you know, uh, this uh, 844 dialects, 22 scheduled languages, and, uh, you know, all world known religions are in this uh, uh, country. And all those religions have their own practices, their own uh, 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 laws also. Take any religion which does not have a personal law. Tell me any religion which does not have a personal law. Yes, every known religion has its own personal law, which have been recognized by this country also. That is the reason. So uh, there are so many questions on constitutional morality and value by so many persons. So uh, I'm just phrasing it in one question, sir. Uh, is there any difference between constitutional morality and constitutional values or are they same? If you ask me, um, I don't say it is both of the same. <clears throat> but the constitutional morality is there in the constitutional value. It's actually a, a little more sharpened uh, value of a constitution. If you sharpen them, that's a pencil. Say, for example, you take a pencil. This is a pencil. This comprises of all the constitutional values. But if you sharpen it a little further, you will see a core, a core uh, mark of the pencil. That core mark of the pencil, according to me, is the constitutional morality. That's why I said, you know, it comprises of, I didn't say justice in it. I said it comprises of four, uh, actually three main values. 
that main three values in constitutional morality are uh, equality, um, liberty, and dignity. Well, you can add fraternity also. Even if you don't add fraternity also, the constitutional morality will be built on three main pillars, that is uh, equality, liberty, and dignity. Dignity of the individual is a very important issue. If you see in the preamble, uh, after having stated uh, the justice, uh, liberty, equality, then it says, and to promote fraternity. And in that fraternity comes the dignity. That's why I said, you know, the, the, the morality, if you think from the moral angle of the constitutional values, it will be built on three pillars, mainly three pillars, equality, liberty, and dignity. If you want to add a fourth pillar, as we always say, fourth state comes in, you know, if you want to add a fourth pillar, it is fraternity. So in the same line, yeah. Yeah. Okay. In the same line, there is a question of, from a faculty member. Uh, he is asking that uh, there is a consistent competing challenge to constitutional morality from legal pluralism. Uh, for example, Shakti Vahini case, especially in context of religious legal system. Does contours of constitutional morality or values respond to such challenges, especially when religion is coming at the forefront of world politics? It's a very complicated and tricky question, I must uh, say. There's no doubt about it. But I tell you, a lot more questions are bound to come uh, when we think, because I, I just don't want to go more in detail, because one issue is pending in Supreme Court, that is Sabrimala. In that most debated uh, issue is uh, this constitutional morality. Okay. How much you can sacrifice this uh, uh, basic principle of equality when you think about the religious freedom and uh, this so constitutional morality versus uh, the constitutionally protected fundamental rights is one of the issues uh, being tested also. Well, but I must tell you, uh, it, 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 we are going to have uh, uh, difficult times and uh, our only hope that you know the Supreme Court of India will rise up to the occasion and safeguard the core constitutional values, irrespective of the cry of the people, irrespective of the noise of the people, but uh, uh, but listening only to the, the conscience of the constitution in the conscience of the judges deciding the cases. So with your permission, can we take two more questions? Yeah, please. Because uh, you, you, I may not be coming this back home again because... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there is a question from Mr. Sagar Rawat. He's asking, uh, there has been seen a long tendency of cases, whether civil or criminal right, from district court to Supreme Court, which ultimately results in delay of justice to victims and aggrieved persons. So how that constitutional value of providing justice to people in timely manner can be ensured by the Apex Court? Uh, my dear friend, let me tell you, don't say cons the, the, the justice to victim. According to me, that's a, that's a very dangerous uh, uh, concept, if you say justice to victim. I, I don't want to comment more on it, because uh, I always uh, feel paint when somebody says, you know, when, a, uh, when, a, when a punishment is imposed, then the victim says, uh, I got justice. Is that a correct approach? Uh, I have my own uh, reservation. I have a different approach also. Only that, you know, the law and um, the, 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 the particular, there is maintenance of law and order is what is actually the victory of justice. The justice, uh, uh, the, 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 just, the victory of justice is actually that, you know, there is law and order in the society. I always say the purpose of law is not only to prevent disorder in society, it's provide order in society. So, the, the courts have been successful or uh, courts have been uh, victorious. But justice has been victorious in preventing disorder and providing order in society. So just, just come back to the long pendency of cases. Uh, uh, I'm sure after this uh, pandemic, uh, you are going to see a floodgate of litigations, uh, not only on account of pandemic, 
but because you know people have not been in a position to file all those cases you know all those cases are also going to come and we had a recent webinar when people have been saying that you know lot many cases on particular uh, domestic violence uh, are going to be reported because people have been confined to their homes and you know why the, the instances of violence have been quite high doesn't matter but i'm saying uh, this is a big issue one reason according to me you know our uh, population jet strength uh, the ratio of a population versus uh, a court don't say a judge population uh, court ratio is uh, really disturbing we hardly have uh, one court for uh, one lakh whereas in america for every 10000 you may have a court that's a whole difference so one you know the appointment uh, the, you need more courts don't say judges more courts that's one way of addressing it two it's high time that you know the mindset of the lawyers change the lawyers uh, according to me uh, pardon me if any lawyer is listening to me lawyers have been uh, uh, blocking the uh, what they call the adr in the sense you know they always feel that you no know, only they argue in the court they will get their fee so i always say, tell the people even if a case is settled you may you must pay a little more to the lawyer because the the, the lawyer has co cooperated uh, in not only uh, in uh, in finishing your case but he has always he has also seen that you know no more litigation is uh, uh, but it was springing out of this so a, a, a lawyer who has con cooperated in mediation should be paid more fees this is actually the mindset of the litigant public and mindset of the lawyer uh, fraternity should also change in testing uh, mediation to me in my experience i say of the more than 50% of the civil cases pending in the supreme court and the high court or in the trial court worth trying for uh, mediation because if you have a grievance it goes to a dispute it goes to a litigation so if you are able to identify your grievance and which has gone to a dispute and grown into a litigation you will be in a position to see so maybe because of your ego because your relationship was because you have a financial interest you because you have a proper interest all these are you know when you can you don't require a, a question of law to be laid down in this you don't require an interpretation of a statute you don't require an interpretation of the constitution you only require a, a dispute to be resolved you don't require a court for resolution of a dispute you require a court to interpret a statute interpret a, uh, the constitution to 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 interpret uh, an issue involved uh, uh, which is beyond a factual dispute so if 50% of the cases are only factually factual disputes, you don't require courts you can take out all those cases and try your mediation try your conciliation try your log adalat try your arbitration and then finish it up but uh, the the mindset of the litigant public in paying the lawyers and the mindset of the lawyers in uh, case of settled and finished uh, should be changed only if they cooperate i'm quite sure this pendency can be radically reduced uh, so there is a question from mr shubham mishra is asking that uh, uh, it is the duty of every organ of the government to uphold the constitutional value but uh, we have seen and we have experienced that it is only the judiciary that goes for upholding the constitutional value and uh, more or less the other organs uh, are not upholding the constitutional value or they are infringing the constitutional value so what is your opinion on that yeah, reason is you know so only uh, if you listen to me earlier only the judiciary is concerned with what the constitution is other organs The, the the political parties or the, the 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 ruling government whichever government irrespective of political party they will be interested in seeing that you know their policies are implemented they may not be concerned with the the fundamental duty of uh, article said that in the constitutional value in their uh, passion to implement their policies they want uh, laws to be made and they know this laws to be implemented but when they tested on the anvil of uh, the constitutionality only the judiciary can say so i agree with you everybody should have this uh, uh, duty of upholding the constitutional value but uh, in a flurry to uh, implement their own policy sometimes in the law makers uh, forget about it 
do implement this the executive also they forget about it and then juncture we call it on that's called judicial review of administrative and legislative action and the, the courts always see to that way. i think that would be all sir because rest of the questions are more or less based on political discussions <laughs> Uh, just one more question sir, the last la last question uh, uh, due to the current scenario of online litigation has been used uh, so do you think that online courts may help in reducing the problem of pendency and uh, should they be continued even after this uh, pandemic my dear friend i salute you for the question i think it should be parallelly continued it might uh, help a resolution of uh, so many disputes no doubt about it whether the pandemic is over or not if we can continue this odr now a new phraseology has come adr and odr online dispute resolution it should be continued therefore uh, parallelly you can have a resolution of uh, so many things so, so my dear uh, friends since i'm um, uh, concluding also we should have a country where you know uh, there, there are uh, we, we 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 are in a position to think about three cs what who is the country according to me are three cs is uh, casteism second is communalism third is corruption if you are able to get rid of these three three from our mind and if you think of a new generation of you people coming out raising your voices not noises and you know getting your conscience free of this three thinking about caste communal community and curse and not to be vouch safe take a take a take a constitutional oath in your conscience that i will not be corrupt in my life i will not be uh, uh, approaching any person or any issue uh, um, uh, in the eyes of a caste or a community then then india will be a new india post pandemic and forever and your contribution and you have a fundamental duty me everybody every one of us as a fundamental duty the first fundamental duty how does it start to abide by the constitution abiding by the constitution is to eschew these three c's casteism communalism and corruption let's have a new india and stand for a better india and that should be the contribution a great institution like lloyd should be given to the to the generations and that should be the approach of the faculty and so that you know the, the all those students who come out from lloyd will be a responsible citizen of this country all the best god bless you jai hind uh, thank you thank you so much sir for uh, an inspiration inspiring lecture on this and especially telling us about that first we should uphold the constitutional value we should inculcate the constitutional value among ourselves then only we can uh, contribute to the nation i request that thank you for watching this video Please like and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell button so you can get the notification for new video in future.